CD337, record director. We're going to call 19.5 our next frequency, which will be tower. If they give us another frequency in the interim, we can just solve that. 991, you filming this one? Yes, sir. Resident. <laughs> 250 works for now, and then yet, Ken, you can resume the published uh, feed. Uh, this could be dangerous. Oh, here we go. Good morning. Now, if that isn't one of the most beautiful sights you'll ever behold. I'm Josh, a pilot and flight instructor who loves the sky, sharing it with those around me and using it to see the world from a new perspective. Flying can seem super complex, but I make it my mission to promote safe practices while enjoying the beauty this world has to offer. Subscribe to Climb Into the Cockpit on future adventures. This is Aviation 101. Well, good morning from San Marcos, Texas. Airplanes all ready to go. The mission for today is to get to New Orleans from Central Texas. The mission for this weekend is to get to Daytona, Florida. Got a big project coming up starting Monday. We're actually getting some upgrades done to this airplane. We're gonna film the whole thing. It's gonna be super exciting. But my first challenge is just getting out of Central Texas and getting eastbound. So this is actually gonna be the beginning of a big, long three-week trip, and we're gonna go all over the place, and I have a passenger that is going to be joining me, but she's not gonna be joining me here. She's meeting me in New Orleans. So aeronautical decision-making doesn't just start when you get in the plane. It starts well before the flight. It starts days and days, perhaps even weeks in advance of a trip. The plan was I could either leave later tonight and just roll into New Orleans and stay the night, and then I'll be there in the morning, or I could get a good night's rest tonight leave very early tomorrow morning and head out to New Orleans. I like to play a three strike ball game. Three strikes and I'm out, I'm not playing anymore. This is a single engine aircraft. I always have that going against me in this airplane, always. The weather, now if I were to leave tomorrow, which is Sunday, it's gonna be low IFR all morning into the afternoon, convective activity, and it's low IFR all across the route, all the way to New Orleans. So that's convection, low ceilings, single engine. Three strikes, I'm out of that. I'm opting to leave a day early because there is no convective activity along my route. We're gonna be able to do this whole thing within daylight hours. Also today, we just recently got a cold front, so that means I've got a wind out of the Northwest that's going to give me a good push to New Orleans. So we're gonna divide this up into two legs. I know that I can make it to New Orleans if I have a tailwind and pull it back to economy cruise, I can land with an hour reserve, no problem. But of course, that does not satisfy IFR fuel reserve requirements. And that also does not satisfy my warm and fuzzy requirements. I mean, what if the weather deteriorates and I have to go mist? Now I'm starting to look at dipping into fuel reserves and that is not a good situation. So we're just gonna avoid that altogether. The plan is to take off out of here in San Marcos and land somewhere in the vicinity of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Some important additional items when you're doing pre-flight for IFR flight is checking the pitot heat. Pito tube's actually a little bit warm right now because I just had the master and pito heat switch on. You want to make sure this starts to get warm within probably 30 seconds of turning on the switch. Also, super important that you check your static port. Super, super important. Um, make sure that that's completely clear. You do not want to be taking off going up into IMC with an altimeter that's not responding. That would not be good. Should be a good day of flying. It's definitely going to be in some weather, but should be a good day. Ground Skyhawk November 80991 IFR to Lake Charles. November 80991 Sam Marcus Ground Roger on a request. Are you ready to taxi in the meantime? Ready to taxi information echo at the T hangers. I just put Fox Shot on the ATIS now. I'll go back to runway 8. Uh, November 80991 uh, runway 8 taxi via Alpha and Clarence is on a request. Okay, taxi to runway 8 via Alpha and we'll listen to Fox Trot 991. Okay, we're clear right and we're clear left. Roger, understand that, smile, 080 on the heading, 3000, 15000. Uh, 80991, ready to copy. Assessed 80991 is clear Lake Charles Airport, Alexi 2, Alexi. College Station, a smile on departure, fly heading 080. Maintain 3000, expect at 900,000, 10 zero minutes at your departure. Departure frequency 119.0, squawk 4555. All right, we're clear to the Lake Charles Airport, Ilexi 2, Ilexi College Station, then as filed on departure fly, heading 080. I'll maintain 3, expect 9 and 10. Departure 119.0, squawk 4558, 991. Session 991, read back is correct. College Station, then as filed. 
which is going to be Tango 254. Basically two Eeks. And Prepo Direct. The Charlie Hotel. Lake Charles Reach. Alright. So stay zero nine nine oh one. Runway eight, clear for takeoff. Runway eight, clear for takeoff, eight zero nine nine one. Okay. Heading zero eight zero, climb to three thousand is our initial instruction. It's gonna get busy as soon as we go into the soup, so that's all we need to worry about. Zero eight zero up to three. Takeoff power is set, the airspeed's alive. Engine looks good. There's 50. There's 60. We're off in a thousand feet. Little nose down trim. And ADIS was reporting 1900 broken, so it's, we actually have a little bit before we go into the soup. Which is good. I'm going to maintain a climb of about 80 knots. Okay, that Take Austin departure. Austin departure, Skyhawk, November 80, 991, 1700, climbing 3. Skyhawk 80, 991, Austin departure, enter contact, Austin altimeter 3006. 3006, 80, 991, passing 2000. Roger. Alright, 2000 up to 3, heading 080. Bases are 2000. Skyhawk 991, climb maintain 9000. Climb maintain 9000, 80, 991. All right, so that means I don't have to stop the climb at three, which is good. I didn't really want to make a configuration change because I'm lazy. Bases were at 2,000. I'm starting to see blue sky up above, so let's see. Sky 991, clear direct college station. Direct college station 991. All right, completely skip over the Ilexi two departure. Direct college station, which is only three zero zero six a touch of a left-hand turn, because we are crowding about 10 degrees or so. We're going to go on four flight, direct to College Station. Oh, here we go. Approach, expect runway 35 right. 35 right, American. <laughs> Good morning. Victor, clear to the New Brunswick. Now, if that isn't one of the most beautiful sights you'll ever behold. I maintain 4,000. In about another 2,000 feet, I'm going to level off and I deserve a sip of coffee. I love breaking out on top like that. And then you just start to see the little glimpses of blue sky and the sun starts to peek through and all that kind of stuff. It's just such a cool feeling when you break out on top and you're like skimming the clouds real fast. And now you're just on top of the world. Okay, I did up 5,000. Okay, right, leveling 9. Okay, pull it back to that 65% power. Clean for the RPM drop. There it is. We're going in a little bit. And we're going to hold our level at 9. Should be able to pretty much take my feet off the rudders. All right, this is what I like to see. This is what I was talking about with aeronautical decision making and why I want to divide this 400, mile, 400 nautical mile leg to New Orleans up into two, basically 200 mile legs. We're an hour and 42 minutes out from Lake Charles where we're probably going to have to shoot an approach. We have four hours and 55 minutes of gas on board. We have so much extra fuel that we could get there, freaking go mist, and go to the next city or just like go to Monroe, Louisiana. In fact, Monroe, Louisiana is my alternate. And it's like over 100 miles away. Good morning, Houston. Skyhawk, November 80, zero, nine, 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 one, level 9 or 1,000, direct college station. Number 8, zero, nine, nine, one, Houston Center, uh, college station, I'll send you 3, zero, zero, 7. Zero, 7, nine, nine, one. Houston Skyhawk, 8, zero, nine, nine, one, nine, thousand. Skyhawk, 8, zero, nine, nine, one, Houston Approach, center, call, send me 3, zero, zero, 7. Zero, 7, nine, nine, one. I'm thinking about going all the way to New Orleans. The weather has gotten better. We have a sustained tailwind and we're getting good fuel economy. From here to New Orleans to Hotel Delta, Hotel Delta Charlie is two hours, 20 minutes. That still leaves us with like over an hour and a half. That's an hour and 40 minutes of gas remaining. We could totally do New Orleans. And the weather in New Orleans is now far better than Lake Charles. Eight zero nine nine one. we've actually got a request uh, looking at possibly changing destinations if you got a moment. Yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, we've just got a lot better winds up here, and the weather is actually looking further uh, better down the road for us. We're just overall trying to get to Florida. If we could change our destination to Mike Sierra Yankee, that's New Orleans International, that'd be great. And you're still requesting 9,000 as a final? Yeah, if we could keep it, that'd be good. Okay, let me work on that for you. Okay, thanks. That's the 9901, clear to the Mike Sierra Yankee Airport, proceed direct, maintain 9,000. Clear direct, Mike Sierra Yankee, maintain 9,000, 809991, thanks. Direct New Orleans, two hours and eight minutes, three hours and 57 minutes of gas on board, and the weather just looks good at New Orleans. And I've got a couple of alternates in mind in the surrounding area that are all forecasting about a thousand foot ceilings at my time of arrival, and they all have ILSs, so that means we can go all the way down to 200 feet on an approach. I think that's the better option. I don't see a reason to take on all the risks of shooting an approach into Lake Charles, getting down there and then launching into low IMC again, just to go another roughly hundred and something nautical miles to get to New Orleans. And that's my final destination, so I like that. November 9901, that change is made for you. Contact approach on 120.05. Have a good day. 20.05, really appreciate the help. 80991, good day. Approach Skyhawk 80991, level 9 or 1000, direct New Orleans now. 80991, using approach rider, altimeter is uh, 06. 06, 9901. Constantly making decisions and altering the plan as needed to take the path of least resistance. Take the path with the least risk. No get their itis on this here flight deck. I like filming these flights because I get to share and like talk out loud through the aeronautical decision-making process that's, that's going on in my head and what I'm doing to assess the situation and figure out how I can mitigate risk. Six one. I think. Yep, 250 works for now and then yet can you can resume the published uh, speeds and This could be dangerous. But I'm gonna go ahead and eat this picadillo taco. I don't have an autopilot so I'm just steering with the rudder, glancing up at the instruments and looking outside, making sure we're still wings level and stuff. If you're gonna look at my flight track from this flight, just look for where the squigglies start happening on my straight, on my straight direct path to New Orleans and that's where I was eating the taco. 80901, contact Baton Rouge Approach, 120.3, have a good one. 20.3, thanks for the help, 9901. Baton Rouge Approach, Skyhawk, 80991, 9000. Skyhawk 80991, Baton Rouge Approach, Baton Rouge Isle, Timber to 3005. 05, 9901. Looking good. We've made great time this morning. I'm really glad I made the decision to overfly Lake Charles. 9901, contact New Orleans now, 125.5, take care. 25.5, 80991, good day. New Orleans Approach, Skyhawk 80991, level 9 or 1000, information, India. Cessna 80991, Orleans Approach, good afternoon information, Julia now, runway 11, North Center 3006. 06, we'll get Juliet, 9901. 80991 has Juliet. 9901, thank you, and are you full stop in this one? Yes, sir. Thank you. Starting in the top left-hand corner, 109.9 is going to be our frequency, so we've got 109.9 in both uh, the first NAVCOM and the second NAVCOM. We're already picking up both. Uh, signals here, but we do have a glide slope flag still, and we are picking up the localizer. No glide slope yet on the HSI. Since this is a VHF approach, we're going to need to make sure that we are in VLOC mode on the 430, which means we'll see green needles on the HSI. Let's go ahead and identify the signals. All right, that is the correct localizer on the first radio. Let's go to radio number two. That is indeed the MSY localizer. Air 9901, go to our turtle. Direct turtle, 80991. All right, let's go to procedure, activate approach, flight plan, scroll down to turtle, direct, enter, enter. All right, the so turtle is actually an intermediate fix, so that works, and he's just gonna have me intercept right there. Turtle is the fix before the final approach fix. We're talking a 125.5 on approach and we're going to call 19.5 our next frequency, which will be tower. If they give us another frequency in the interim, we can just solve that. It's just put the frequency in there and we'll just... 991, you filming this one? Yes, sir. Right there. 
<laughs> so we're heading straight to the turtle intersection. We're going to probably intercept the localizer there, and we'll maintain out or above 2,000 until Mudbug, and cross Mudbug out or above 2,000, and that's where we will intercept the glide slope. Not cleared yet, just like it should join on that This heading. approach is going to be a straight out climb to 800 feet, and then begin a right climbing turn to 2,000 feet to a heading of 130 degrees. We're going to intercept the Lima Echo Victor radial 354 and track that to the safe's intersection. The 430 will help us with all of that because we are our nav equipped. Cessna 9917 miles from Turtle, cross Turtle at 3000, cleared ILS, runway 11 approach. Across Turtle at 3000, cleared for the ILS 11 and in New Orleans 80991. Alright, so that was my approach clearance. Descending through 4200 for 3000, and we're going to cross Turtle at 3000 and. We are clear. Cessna 991, I can't wait to hear myself. You can't say no, sir. 109.5. See you. 19.5, you'll see it on YouTube. Yep. New Orleans Tower, Skyhawk 80991, established ILS 11. Skyhawk 80991, the one star 1080 at 9 or 1-1, clear to land. 1-1, clear to land, 80991. 7 Mike Yankee, sir, you want me to hold on to this squawk? Once you get down, you're going to come back out. All right. We are established. Passing turtle now. It's going to be a quick turn. I'm going to hold on to the squawk for you once you get down. All right, glide slope's alive. One, two, three. I see it in three places. All right, there's the glide slope. We're just a hair above glide slope, waiting to see the white arc on both airspeed indicators. There it is. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Three, one thousand. Flap set ten. Our initial altitude on the mist is eight hundred feet, so we're going to go ahead and set our altitude bug for that. And now we're just flying the ILS. We are in IMC past the final approach fix, so that means we can log this approach in our logbook. 80 knots, on localizer, on glide slope. Oh, there's a little bit of a sideways bit of wind. Alright, 1,300, starting to be able to see out the front a little bit. I'm still on the instruments. I do not have the runway in sight, so I am not going outside. Okay, now I've got the runway in sight. There she is. So we're coming down through 500 feet on the altimeter. This approach allows us to go all the way down to 204 feet on the altimeter without seeing the runway. At that point, that's the point at which we need to see the runway. Or else we go missed. I'll call minimums when we hit 200 feet, or 204. Minimums. That's pretty crazy. All right, there's the inner marker. We got the runway made. Power's coming to idle. 6261, runway two, line up and wait. Runway two, line up and wait, stop at 6261. And we're just going to hold it in ground effect until the airplane completely stalls and she touches down on the mains gently. There's a pretty good float. <laughs> we're just floating. Atlantic. Turn left on taxiway, Charlie, taxi park monitor ground point niner. Monitor point niner left, Charlie, 80991, thanks. All right, a good IFR flight over here to New Orleans International. Lots of airline traffic in and out of this airport. And luckily nobody was coming in behind me, so it was pretty easy for me to just kind of go at my own pace. I pretty much maintained 80 knots the whole way. All right. We're here in New Orleans. I'm very glad I decided to go ahead and push on all the way out here. So uh, it's midday, so I have time to go to a hotel, get some work done and just wait out the weather. And Chelsea will be here tomorrow morning over there at the terminal. And I'll go get her and then we'll come over here, hop in the plane and continue on to Florida, I'm gonna put the camera down and start unpacking the plane. Welcome to Louisiana. The whole reason I'm heading into Daytona is to collaborate with PowerFlow Systems to film the installation and testing of their tuned exhaust on 80991. So keep an eye out for that full episode, including before and after flights coming soon. If you'd like to see the full length 45 minute edit from this IFR flight into New Orleans, you can find it under the full length flights tab on aviation101.com slash cockpit club. Link is down in the description. In the next episode, I'll be picking up Chelsea at the passenger terminal and we'll file another IFR flight plan to continue the trek east. Until then, you know the drill. Stay happy, healthy, and current, and most importantly, stay proficient. We'll see you in the next one. Fly safe.